Hi guys, Dr. Colbreth here with chapter 25, number 47. It says the figure shows four charges at the corners of a square of side L. What is the magnitude of the net force on little Q, this charge in the upper right corner here? All right, so the gist of this question here is that we need to superimpose the forces produced by each one of these charges. So let's go around and draw on the diagram what direction each one of those forces is going to point. So we have this negative charge here, opposites attract, so we expect a charge that points to the left towards that negative charge. Similarly, we have another negative charge down here, and we expect a charge that points down, or excuse me, a force that points down times that towards that charge. And we have a positive charge here, which repels, so we expect a force that points up and to the right from these. So this is us doing physics here, is applying the direction of these forces uh, to this diagram. We have to think about which charges are positive, which are negative, and what direction each of those forces should go. So don't underestimate the importance of going through the diagram and assigning a direction to each one of these forces. There's really no other way to start this problem. All right, so <clears throat> I also want to assign a coordinate system to this problem. I'm just going to use the standard right-hand coordinate system, plus x points to the right, plus y points up. And we're going to need to use the magnitude of Coulomb's law um, to calculate the length of each one of those arrows. We've already done the physics in calculating the direction. So now this just comes down to vector addition. So uh, let's go ahead and calculate the length of each one of these. I'm going to label these forces A, B, and C, just for clarity. And uh, we will recall that Coulomb's law says that the magnitude of those forces is going to be equal to uh, the electric constant K times the magnitude of the first charge times the magnitude of the second charge, all divided by the distance between those two charges squared. So let's start with force A. That's going to be this force that points to the left, and we're just going to go ahead and calculate its magnitude to begin with. Notice there's no vector hat here on this symbol. So that's going to give us the electric constant K times little q, which is our first charge, uh, times big Q, which is our second charge, divided by the distance between them, which is going to be L squared. And if we want to make this into a vector, we also need to assign a direction. And this force points to the left, which is in the opposite of the plus x direction. So our uh, direction here is going to be minus i hat. And similarly, we can calculate force b. The magnitude is going to be given by k times little q times big Q. Once again, the distance between them is L squared. And this one points in the opposite of the plus y direction. So this is going to be minus j hat. Um, now, since this is a square and both sides of this uh, square are L, this angle here is going to be 45 degrees. And our force C can be broken up into a piece that points along the plus X direction and a piece that points along the plus Y direction. So <clears throat> force C is going to be equal to uh, K times little q. And in this case, we have four big Q. And the distance here is not going to be L, but it's going to be L times the square root of 2, applying our special right triangle for a 45, 45, 90. And that is the magnitude of this force, but we need to break it up into components. We have a piece that points in the plus x direction here, um, and it is adjacent to our angle of 45 degrees. So we're going to have the cosine of 45 degrees i hat. And opposite uh, the angle 45 degrees um, is our y piece. So we're also going to have plus the sine of 45 degrees times j hat. And we're going to apply, once again, a special right triangle here. And recall that the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to the sine of 45 degrees, which is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2. Um, and so just to simplify the algebra in the next few steps, I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in and expand the square root of 2 down here. So we get that force C is equal to K times uh, little q. We get a bit 4 out front times big Q divided by L squared times the square root of 2 squared, which is going to give us a factor of 2. And then inside of the vector pieces here, we have the square root of 2 over 2 <coughs> times I hat plus the square root of 2 over 2 times J hat. So we can factor a 2 outside of here, which makes this into a 4, and those 4s are going to cancel. So <clears throat> that just gives us uh, k little q big Q over L squared times the square root of 2 i hat plus the square root of 2 j hat. 
So the net force is going to be the vector sum of these two pieces. So we're going to add the i hat components, which is going to be uh, fa and this root 2 i hat, and we're going to add the j hat components. Um, so we have some symmetry here, which we would expect since we have uh, the same situation in the x and y direction. We're going to have the same situation for the x and y components here in our net force. We're going to get k little q times big Q over L squared times the square root of 2 i hat, <coughs> excuse me, square root of 2 minus 1 i hat plus the square root of 2 minus 1 j hat. In both cases we have our same leading factor of k little q big Q over L squared. Here we have a minus j hat, which is where this minus 1 comes from here. We have a minus i hat, which is where the minus 1 comes here from here. Now it asks for the magnitude of the net force. Recall that the magnitude of a vector is equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So we just need to add these guys up. So we're going to get that the net force is equal to the square root of this x component squared which is going to be k little q big Q over L squared times the square root of 2 minus 1 all squared uh, plus the y piece squared which is actually the same p the same thing because we have had this 45 degree symmetry here so we can combine these two pieces and just get a 2 out in front So uh, the square root is going to cancel the squared here, and we get a square root of 2 out in front. So the square root of 2 times little q, big Q over L squared, times the square root of 2 minus 1. <clears throat> and the last thing we need to do is distribute the square root of 2 across, and we get the magnitude of the net force is going to be equal to k times little q times big Q divided by L squared. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Square root of 2 times negative 1 is minus the square root of 2.